Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Zainab Bora and I'm super thrilled today, uh, more happier than usual because I have with me Dr. Ronak, uh, Ronak Shah who is from Rajkot which is the same city as I, we belong to the same school and he's done amazingly well in this INICT, secured a rank 29. Uh, so I'm so so proud of you and uh, tell me how, how it's been, how has the journey been like for you? Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for having me. It's an honor for me to be here and to be able to speak to you. Thank I am you. really grateful for all that you've been doing for all of us aspirants over the last few years. And I just want to first say that it has made like it has made so much of a difference to our preparation. And I'm really grateful for that. So, yeah, uh, talking about my journey, it started last year, I would say in November. I'm from the batch of 2018. So, uh, last November, INICT 2023 was the first exam that I appeared for and that was in the middle of my internship. So mm -hmm. that is the exam that I took without any preparation as such. I think maybe a week or a couple of weeks before the exam is when I read a little bit of notes here and there mm -hmm. and solved like I think two or three question bank like previous PYT, PYQ modules from okay. an app. So that was the max that I could do at that time. And uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting anything, but uh, I was able to get a rank of 3,911 in okay. that exam nice. without pretty much doing anything else. So mm -hmm. that is something that gave me, you know, some hope that there is chance for me to maybe do better next time and get a seat of my choice. Mm -hmm. So my internship got over in the end of January and mid-February is when I got back home and started mm -hmm. getting in the groove. Uh, and started preparing. So initial one, one and a half months was just very half as hard. I didn't have a proper plan in place and I everything was ev all over. Like I used to go through main notes for the subjects which I could not do in final year. So I was doing the, all of that to just, you know, fill the gaps in my knowledge. And I realized towards the end of those few months that it was taking a lot of time and considering that I wanted to try for me and I, I wasn't keeping it as my target as I knew that, that I didn't have a lot of time but I still thought I would want to do at least one revision of all subjects so that I have a grip about you know everything mm -hmm. so and I think it was in the beginning of April that I came across and the, about BTR and what mm -hmm. it is from mm -hmm. a few places and I decided to get the subscription so yeah April is when I got the BTR subscription and started doing it with the target of completing at least one revision mm -hmm. before the exam Right. which is what I was able to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I did one revision like with all the videos. And after that, I tried going through notes a couple of times before the exam. I was, I was, and I would say I still am a terrible test taker. So I was very anxious about giving GTs and I couldn't uh, really do that. I, it, even solving question banks is something that used to give me a lot of anxiety too, so to say. Mm -hmm. So I had a really tough time doing that. So yeah, that is what I basically did and uh, just went for the exam. And to my surprise, I was able to secure a rank of 526 in that MAI and ICET, which was mm -hmm. unexpected for me back then. Yeah. As my target was neat. Uh, and because of all the postponements, I thought I had time to, you know, try and yeah. give my best shot at neat and get a desirable seat. Mm -hmm. So that was a surprise that may boosted my confidence further. Mm -hmm. And then the further postponements gave me more time to a brush upon my topics and uh, revise more so yeah that is about it i then started preparing for neat and for neat again i used btr as the primary resource because as you've told for a long time and a lot of my seniors also told me that don't try and run after you know uh, doing a lot of things or covering a lot of syllabus what's important is that you need to revise more so do little but do it multiple times and that is what you will you know help you so i tried to do that i tried doing BTR again and again and again multiple times to, you know, make sure that I do not miss, you know, out on anything that us, gets us from BTR, which is what you keep saying. So that is something that I tried to emphasize on for my knee prep. I tried to do RR notes. Mm -hmm. I could do one round and then again, mm -hmm. I tried to revise it a little. But again, I realized the same thing that what will help me is the content that I'm able to revise uh, 10 days before the exam or two mm -hmm. weeks before the exam. So I decided to stick to BTR and just do that and ensure that I'm doing that well. Right. So, so by the time NEET came, how many rounds of uh, BTR revision would you have done? Uh, between May and May INICT and NEET, I would have covered at least, I think, three rounds. And by May also, I had done two. So if I say, five. like, so to sum it all up, I say, I would say five rounds from the beginning of 
uh, yeah, Feb, uh, I yeah March, April. I was just interviewing somebody before you. You also said the same number. They said I revised it five times. So I think that is what it takes, you know, to remember. We think that toppers must remember it the first time around itself. No, it's multiple rounds that you reach this position, you know. I think it takes this for everybody. And the fact that you said that I'm a terrible test taker, I, I think uh, that's a very, very uh, important thing because that's also a myth that everybody who tops must be good at MCQs or, or must be very confident at giving GTs. That's what I also thought uh, always, uh, that I am not a good exam taker, a good MCQ person. So whereas people around me, my good friends were, and that's why they got the rank, even though I knew better. But but that's something that you work on. So so what was it that you uh, worked on, or or was it something that just happened, you know, in the exam? So yeah, I'll tell you something. I have a couple of insights. I'm not sure if this is what was mm-hmm. able to get me a good rank or what. But the difference between my preparation till uh, NEET and for this November INICT is the fact that I took more GTs. Like. First of all, uh, right after NEET, I was on like a very long vacation for one, one and a half months. It was your NEET rank, by the way, I interviewed. Yeah. Yes, uh, my NEET rank was 802. Okay, so so, so a great rank, which w- would have gotten you the seat that you wanted. Yes, it would have gotten me the branch of my cho- choice, choice, mm-hmm. maybe not the college. So, okay. uh, so that is one of the things, like I was on a long break. Uh, yeah. for one one and a half months and then mm-hmm. during the last 10 days i tried to evaluate what colleges i'm getting i right. visited a couple of colleges and uh, realized that from like they're very different from my alma mater and it okay. just didn't fit with me to you know go back and work here. yeah which is yeah yeah so uh, that is something that kind of bogged me down that maybe i should have done better i could have done better so mm-hmm. that is what you know helped me drive myself yeah. towards giving one more shot and co- that combined with the postponements in the uh, counseling process is what got me to start preparing again and i would say i prepared for like uh, 25 to 30 days max like that is when i did yeah. started my preparation 30 days before the exam i would say roughly and i was able to do one round of btr i decided to do btr 2.0 videos and i realized that there were quite a few extra points especially uh, pre- previous uh, questions and pointers from there yeah. so i did that and a couple of rounds of uh, revision of the notes that i had annotated mm. from the btr 1.0 Mm-hmm. So those are the things and more importantly, I finally decided that if I want to do something different, I need to figure what I had not done, which was mm-hmm. take enough GTs. Yeah. So I just tried to eat the frog and start taking as many GTs as I can. And I think I, I took, I think 10 or 15 GTs. Like I was trying to... In 20 days? In 30, 30 days. So I was every alternate days on an average. And in wow. between, there was a week where I tried taking one GT every day. And I think one day was when I don't know why I was feeling so confident or overconfident. I don't know, but I took two GTs in one day. So that was <laughs> about it. Yeah. And okay. I think that might have helped me somewhere. Or the How other. were you doing in those GTs? What was your score range? Uh, I think it was okay. I was uh, getting, I think, more than 150 corrects, I would say, mm-hmm. on an average. But that was like, I, I like need GTs or INIC, GTs, right. everything in general. There were a couple where I didn't do really good. Mm. And mm. yeah, so there were ups and downs. But on, on an average, I was getting above 150. But correct. But I w- never yeah. got a rank, which was, you know, in those top 50 or where you would see your name in the list. Yeah. And you, there are always some people who, you know, you, who, whose name you would see but every time. Yes, yeah. consistently. So I was, I could never get my name on one of those lists. Yeah. But then I still thought I'd try my best, be rela- as relaxed as I can and just go yeah. for it and see how it goes. So, so uh, let's go to the actual exam because from the range that you quoted, I believe your score would have been somewhere close to 170 in the actual exam. Uh, uh, so, so what was that plus 20 push that you got? How was the exam day for you, INICT? Is there anything you did differently from your previous two exams? Um, I, I think I have... I, I tried to, I think I was in the same mindset as most of my previous exams. I uh, try to not take a lot of stress. I mean, it is inevitable, but I try to remain as cool as possible. Mm-hmm. And all of my journey, I would say, has always been one at a time, whether it be one day at a time while preparing, yeah, one true. set at a time while taking the exam, or be it one question at a time where you don't think of the previous question or the next question. Yeah. So I think that is what might have helped me to be in the frame of mind in such a way that I just focus on what is in front of me like you always say that is so, so important. 
uh, you need to highlight, need to take a moment and highlight what you just said because that is what most students miss. We are constantly thinking of what we are not doing or what I don't know while we are solving a question or while you are studying. Uh, Please do what you're doing to the best of its ability. Please solve that one question in front of you to the best of your ability. And, and that is so important and so underrated. So so I'm so glad that you brought it up because I feel uh, that's the point most students are missing. Correct. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more with you. So that is one thing, yes. Um, so, so if we talk about the four sets that you had for for INICT, how was the process of giving the exam like? Um, did it feel very close to one of the GTs you had written, or or what was going on in your mind? Yeah, so I, I think one thing is I think I have a really poor memory, so mm -hmm. that is one thing, and I, I try to take one set set at a time. The first set was fine. I think third set is what I found to be mm -hmm. lengthy and a little tricky, where I had to. Uh, give more time than I could mm. in general. And the fourth set was also, I think, uh, relatively easier, which is yeah. the set that I finished the past test. And I actually had marked like, I think, 10 to 15 questions for review in the last set. Okay. And yeah, so I, because I could finish it faster, I started going through them again. And I had one, like the only strategy I had in my mind was that you either go big or go home, especially for INICT. So I was yeah. trying to target at least more than 190 attempts, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 190 question attempts. So I realized that I can't leave so many and come back home expecting a good score. So I tried to go through them and hit as many as I could. And I attempted 197 in total. Mm. So yeah, I think that is one thing. And uh, uh, guessing them correctly and trying to use whatever knowledge we have acquired over the last five, five and a half years and trying to find that one hint that could, you know, lead us towards an answer is something that I tried to do. Great, great. Amazing. Uh, so, so 197 was your attempt. And I think that's true for almost every uh, topper. I think when the pattern got changed, maybe it dropped a little, but now it's back to, you know, 195 plus for all the top rankers. So that's mm -hmm. again, one important message that you have to attempt high, particularly I and I, you can't be uh, scared of the negatives. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, what is now your advice to students who are in their MBBS? I, I'm sure uh, Jipmer would have given you very good exposure and academics. Uh, so, so let's say there is somebody who's in their MBBS third year or fourth year starting to think of Indian PG entrances. What should be their approach right now? And and about interns or post interns who are now starting to prepare seriously for these two groups. You know, what is it that you would want to tell them? Yes, so I think that the people who are still in their MBBS, I would just request them to focus on the academics, have next, like, read from the textbooks and focus and try to get uh, good grades in the uh, college exams because it okay. basically helps you build that base. One thing that I did in my MBBS, which I uh, give a lot of credit to, is uh, uh, appear for step one, USMLE. So in yeah, I think during my second year is when we had our lockdown and that is the time when we a uh, bunch of us decided mm -hmm. to go for step one so okay. i was able to do first aid back then really well and attempt appear for step one so i think the base that first day first aid built is something that has helped me get uh, the rank that i have gotten so i would like to emphasize on that that uh, that is a, an amazing resource but yeah. that being said i also feel that it is a little factual so yeah. only if we have the understanding of the concepts that are associated with them is when we will be able to make the most of it so it is very important to have that base in order to utilize that information and more importantly, remember it well. So that is one thing. So I would suggest that just focus on the academics that happen and focus on third year, fourth year subjects and try to get that done. If possible, and if you have time, first aid during MBBS is something that will ensure that you have a strong, really strong base and you can score well. And apart from that, I think for interns, I would say for my internship, uh, speaking from my experience, I did absolutely nothing like mm -hmm. zero preparation during my internship. All we could do was do our duties because we used to have really long, hectic hours. And yeah. in the rest of the time, we just used to have fun and make the most of what we could. But, uh, hindsight, do you think uh, that exposure, uh, clinical exposure in internship, your rotations in undergrad uh, would have helped you in this rank? What do you think? Most definitely. I think. Uh, I think especially INIC, it is uh, more about what knowledge we've acquired over the past five years and not just about what we read in the books. So somewhere or the other, it will help us connect to what we've done over the years. And one thing I again, I'd like to add is that 
I got to know about BTR after finishing a couple of months, like two, a couple of months after finishing my internship. I was just talking to my friend that had we known about this resource during our internship, we might have been able to join residency earlier because uh, again, because of a few reasons that BTR is very crisp and concise. Now, straight out of final year, I feel most people would have read enough to pass that they would have their basics in place. So if they just top it off with good revisions of BTR whenever they can, that would just help them uh, solidify everything. So that is one thing. BTR, uh, yeah, that BTR will help you do that the most. And solving Q, Q banks would also, I think, be in favor of getting a good rank early on. Yeah. So those are the things I, that I didn't do, but I wish I would have because that would have helped me uh, perform better initially. Great. Uh, you know, interestingly, you are the third person that I've interviewed for this INICT who's given step one. Um, uh, not to say that everybody should give step one to get a good rank, but uh, it emphasizes the importance of first and second prof uh, for uh, INICT particularly and, and now NEET also. I don't think NEET was any different. Uh, your physiopath pharma continuum with medicine or what we call as integrated systems is it's so important that it, and it won't be asked directly it won't seem like it's a direct question coming from it but your underlying concepts and base you know so so uh, when you said use first aid again i i want to clarify here it's also a concise resource just as btr you know so if you directly think that just reading that and and everything will be sorted it's not it takes a lot to understand first aid uh, so if you are able to do that means you are already on the right track you know so so reach a point where first aid seems very simple to you it seems uh, easy to you easy read so i i think it's a very good idea to read it with medicine uh won't you agree at least the uh, yeah yeah most definitely ma'am and again i'd like to emphasize how great and how well designed the entire course is most importantly the integrated chapters because those cover pretty much everything from physiology pathology pharmacology and medicine and especially for an exam like inict where they are heavily tested it is the must do yeah, because that's what I feel also. I've also given uh, step one and step two both. So that's why I understand the beauty of, of those resources and how they develop. They they fo fill in the blanks in that's, your yes. head, you know, that, that, okay, fine, I've studied this and I've studied this, but okay, they are the same, you know. So so that's what it does. So that's what we'll recommend to juniors who are in their MBBS that when you're doing your medicine, it's a good idea to just open a PDF of USMLE first aid and go through the systems while you're reading it. It form a very good base uh, for your medicine as well uh, so so i think that's that's a great point there uh, so thank you so much uh, ronak for for talking to me if you want to say uh, you know give a shout out uh, to your family your friends uh, i i think it'll be great thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, yes definitely i think all of the credit goes to my family members my dad my mom my elder sisters and my college seniors and batchmates who have always been with me throughout this journey and one thing I would just like to tell everyone is that uh, try to take everything one one day at a time, the whole preparation. Don't stress too much and just try and take more GTs. That is the one thing that I wish I could have done earlier as it helps a lot. Yeah. And and as we uh, conclude, you know, I just want to tell you, you are a great speaker and, and I would love to see a YouTube channel <laughs> from you. <laughs> And, and make some videos, uh, you know, guiding students. And, and I'm sure they're going to love to hear from you. And, and not just medicine videos, you can do, you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, so you are a great speaker. Do do tap into that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for talking to me. Likewise, ma'am. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you.